this opportunity to appreciate all the men and women of God. Uh, some of you we are meeting for the first time this year. Karibuni uh, sana. And we appreciate each one of you for coming to this lunch hour service. Mark chapter 8. I'm going to read verse 23. I'll begin verse 22. But it begins somewhere in the middle. Um, but anyway, let me just begin verse 22. The Bible says, And he cometh to Bethsaida, that is Jesus, and they bring a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. And the story goes on and on. You can continue at your own time. You know, when I look at the ministry of Jesus, it is characterized by the miracle of opening blind eyes. Actually, one of the premier miracles he did in John chapter 9 was the opening of the one uh, the eyes of the one who was born blind. We believe that miracles still happen today Amen. and God is able to open the eyes of the blind literally. We are still living in the days of miracles. You know, one of the prayers I've been praying for myself and I think uh, especially the more you grow in, you stay longer in the Christian faith is a prayer you cannot avoid. To ask God to deliver us from the spirit of religion. It is a spirit that affects those who have stayed long in the faith. Because it is very easy to settle for the average, for what you have experienced. But I've been asking God to deliver me from this spirit of religion so that I can believe everything in scripture is real. It doesn't matter whether we have experienced it or not, it is possible. Amen? So look at your neighbor and tell them, you have the capacity to open the eyes of the blind. And not, not uh, imaginary, not in your dreams, you know, literally. Amen? But today I'm more interested with uh, still the issue of opening of eyes, but I'm more interested with the spiritual sight. And this is a burden the Lord put in my heart. I think it was in, in December over the holidays. And when we stepped into January, it has been a major issue. Uh, I've been thinking about, praying about it. Some of you who have heard me speak, this is the only thing I'm speaking. Uh, the issue of spiritual sight. And that's what I want to share with you in the next 30 minutes. Spiritual sight. And if God allows, we'll continue with this tomorrow. I know that for some of you, maybe for most of you here, uh, because most of you are born again, you are able to see in the spirit. Uh, if you have the Holy Spirit and you have walked with God and you, or you're walking with God, of course you see. You see spiritually, your spiritual eyes are able to see and, and, and all that. But the reason why I've read this story is because I believe that we need to go beyond seeing to a place where we see clearly. 
It's all about clarity. You see, the Bible says they bring a blind man to Jesus and then they plead with Jesus and say, please heal this man of his blindness. And Jesus takes mud. Hallelujah. Uh, that was the first time Jesus ever did that. He spit on the ground, creates mud, places it on the person, and then prays for him or places his hands upon him and uh, uh, oh, sorry, he doesn't take mud but he spits. He, he just spits on his eyes, put his hands upon him and asked him if he saw anything. And then this blind man responds by saying, I see men. But then he adds and says, I see men like trees walking. So he was seeing for the first time. But he was honest enough to say, Lord, I see. I see men, but they're like trees. And then Jesus prays for him the second time. And the Bible says his eyes were opened and he could see clearly. Can we pray a prayer to God and say, Lord, I have been seeing, but I've been seeing men like trees. I've been seeing, but I am I'm honest with you, God. I'm not seeing clearly. There are some things that are still not clear to me. And if you're honest with the Lord concerning your spiritual sight, I assure you, God will give you clarity in your spiritual sight. And may that be your experience in Jesus' name. sana. There are so many scriptures uh, in my mind, but I will try this afternoon just to show you three scriptures that will help you to appreciate this whole issue of spiritual sight. If you go to Proverbs chapter 20, verse 12, the Bible says, the hearing ear and the seeing eye, the Lord has made even both of them. In other words, Solomon is saying, for you to hear, it takes the Lord. For you to see, it takes the Lord. It is the Lord who gives you a seeing eye. Now, tomorrow I'm going to come back to this verse because there are things I want to show you in this verse. But I want you to appreciate that. And you know, as you are praying about spiritual sight, and this is a very relevant message because we are still early in the year. As you pray for spiritual sight, I want you to appreciate that you cannot see unless the Lord helps you to see. Job was leading us in the prayers before most of you came and he gave the example of uh, Elisha and, and his servant, I think it was Gehazi. You know, when they were surrounded by, by enemies and Elisha prays to God and says, Lord, open the eyes of this blind, this blind servant of mine. And when God opened his spiritual eyes, he was able to see the spiritual reality that was around them. And that is a miracle that you and I need for clarity of sight to be able to see. Because unless you see, and if you have a notebook and you want to write, this may be your first statement. Unless you see, you can never do business with God. When I say do business, I, of course, uh, you understand what I'm saying. Unless you see spiritually, you cannot say that I have begun with God. We only begin with God at the place of sight. Amen. At the place of sight. Now, to make it more practical and, uh, and, 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 and easy to receive what I'm saying, you know, in terms of understanding, let me give you some things that explains this thing I call spiritual sight. For example, in this year 2019, I pray that your spiritual eyes will be open 
to see the opportunities that are around you. Opportunities. So, you should not just pray, God give me opportunities. The important thing is to ask God, God open my eyes to do what? To see opportunities. Again, may the Lord open your eyes and my eyes to see ideas and creative ideas that can change our lives completely. Every one of you, you are surrounded by ideas. When I say ideas, I mean things that are existing, potential things. I've not yet manifested, but they are potential things. Now, it is for the Lord to open our eyes to see some creative ideas that we can be able to pick from the spiritual realm and make them manifest in our lives. May the Lord open your eyes to see solutions. Hallelujah. I've always been giving this example. In my life, pastors, many times when I pray, God does not give me what I ask for. He helps me to see the answer. You know, because it's very easy for us, you know, when you pray and say, Lord, um, these are just material examples. Lord, give me a car. You know, it's easy. You wake up one morning and then you see a BMW parked out of your house. You know, that, that would be good. Don't you think so? But how many of you know that is very rare? It's very rare. I mean, you just wake up and you see, wow, BMW. It always begins at the place of sight. God shows you something that will eventually cause you to have what you are praying to God for. So may your eyes be open to see solutions. Oh, Bwana Sifuwa Sana. In this season of possessing the gates of our enemies, may the Lord open your eyes to see the gates that he has already opened for you. When you talk about sight, spiritual sight, we are also talking about the spirit of understanding. Coming to a place of what? Understanding. How many of you want to come to that place? In your own life. Amen? Now, what you need is sight. Okay. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 22 because that is our main chapter for this year. Genesis chapter 22. Um, I'm going to read uh, this portion of scripture skipping here and there so that I can get to, the, to my point. Now, the Bible says in Genesis 22 from verse 1, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains which I shall tell thee of. The Bible says, Abraham rose up early in the morning, saddled his donkey, and took his two young men with him, or his young men with him, and said to his son, Isaac, um, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went unto the place of which God had told him. Now, this is the story of Abraham. God appears to Abraham after giving him his son, and tells Abraham, now, actually the Bible says God tested him. How many of you know that God will always test you? And you know the problem with God, he tests you when you are not ready. He doesn't tell you when the exam comes. <laughs> he, 
Amen? It can come mid-term, the, the beginning of the term, or end term. Any time. And the Bible says, Abraham wakes up and early in the morning decides to obey what God tells him. And he takes his son and he goes now to the mountain that the Lord has said, I'm going to tell you of it. So in other words, he didn't know which mountain he was to go to. Okay, I'm heading somewhere with this. But he told him, when you get there, I will show you the mountain. And as they were walking, you remember the story, Isaac looks as his father, and actually most Bible uh, scholars believe Isaac was an adult at that time. So he looks at his father and says, okay, dad, I know this whole business of sacrifice. I can see the wood. I know we'll get the stone for the altar in the mountain, but there's something lacking. Where is the sacrifice? Then his father tells him, you don't worry. God will provide himself a sacrifice. So that is none of your business. That's none of my business. But Abraham knows, young man, you are the sacrifice. So they walk. And as they were walking, God had already gone ahead of Abraham to create the environment that God wanted. But Abraham didn't know. So they get to Mount Moriah. He leaves his servants. And the Bible says he goes up to the mountain, builds an altar. And then now I'm paraphrasing. He looks at Isaac and says, my son, I'm sorry. You're the sacrifice. And Isaac, an obedient son, says, if that is what God has said, I am ready. Let me tell you, Abraham did not fight with Isaac. Because if, if it was a fight, Abraham would become the sacrifice. Because <laughs> he was an old man. But Isaac willingly yielded. Just like Jesus would yield 2,000 years later or thereabout. So Isaac says, okay, I'm willing to be the sacrifice. He lays the boy on the altar, takes the knife, and when he's about to kill the son, an angel of God is sent immediately, and he comes suddenly, and he tells Abraham, wait, God has known that you truly obey him, and you fear him. Don't kill your son. I mean, it was an emergency word that was sent from heaven. A word of emergency. Because if God had delayed, Isaac would have gone. Abraham was more than willing to obey. Alright? And that's why we have always been saying this, ladies and gentlemen. One of the keys for you in this year 2019 is obedience. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. One as if you other. I think some of you delayed in a few seconds to receive that. So tell your neighbor. Whatever the Lord tells you to do, do it. Just do it. The key for you is going to be obedience. Yeah. Obedience. To big things or big instructions or small instructions, but just obey. Now, the Bible says, when he did that, now look at verse 12. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes. I love that. Abraham lifted up his eyes. Now, what had happened? He had obeyed God. The angel of God had come, stopped him from killing his son. Immediately after that, when his obedience is complete, the Bible says he lifted up his eyes. And what did he see? It says, and looked. Somebody say looked. And behold, behind him, a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. 
as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. Now, that is, that is the essence of what I want to share with you today. Let me create the scenario for you. When Abraham was instructed by God that morning to take his son to offer him in that mountain, God had already organized for Aram to be there. That ram or that, that is, it, is a ship, a male ship, did not come out of heaven. It got lost by divine ordination of God. And God knew, I want to test Abraham, but I know how the story will end up. Now, before the story begins, he orchestrates for a ram to be lost and to be caught in a thicket in a particular mountain. That is why everything you need is already provided for. Everything you need. Now, we are about to get to that point because as we go from this lunch hour service today, I want you to understand the power of sight. Everything you need, Pastor Godfrey, for 2019 and in this season is already provided for even before we began. Your gate is already there. Your blessing is already there. Your breakthrough, whatever you want to call it, is already there. It is provided. Now, Abraham begins the journey. God knows how it will end up, but Abraham doesn't know. So Abraham obeys. He goes. He gets to the mountain, but his eyes are shut. He can't see. He can see his environment. He can see the altar. He can see his son, but he cannot see the solution. So, as far as his environment is concerned, he sees everything, but there is only one thing that is hidden from him. But God had ordained that his obedience will be the one that will open his eyes. And that is why the Bible says, when Abraham obeyed and the angel of God stopped him, he lifted up his eyes. Verse 13. May you have that encounter in the name of Jesus. That in the spirit, you will lift up your eyes. And look what it says. He says, and looked and behold behind him. Not one kilometer away. It was behind him. Can you imagine? <laughs> the boy is here. Let's assume this is an altar. The boy is here. He wants to kill the boy. But the ram is behind him. You know, I, I felt like being simplistic and ask, what is behind you? <laughs> just imagine. Behind him. It doesn't say it was far. It was just behind him. What is that you are seeking God for? What is that prayer you have been lifting to God and say, Lord, do this? Let me tell you. It is already there. It is behind you. But unless the Lord opens your eyes, you cannot see it. The opportunity is beside you. It's just next to you. It's next to me. But it is only God who gives us seeing eyes. I pray you'll understand this thing. So he's behind him, there was a ram. And then he said, oh, thank you, God. That's when he begins to thank God. Then he takes the ram and sacrifices it in the place of his son. But you know what amazed me, servants of God, was this. All that while, the ram was there. That's why the Bible says there is no other God like our God. He declares the end from the beginning. Before he begins, he has ended. And when he ends, now he brings you to the beginning. He does not go to the beginning, no. He brings you 
to the beginning. He says, okay, begin. But then he knows, you will meet me at the end. It's already there. So, the issue is not the ram. The issue is not the need that you have. The issue is, are you able to see? Oh Lord, this thing of spiritual sight. And you know, sometimes you can even spend a lifetime with your ram and never see it. Hmm? Look at verse 14. It says, And Abraham called the name of that place what? Jehovah Jireh. Now, you see now that was the miracle. He said he called the place Jehovah Jireh as it is said to this day. To which day? That is 30th of January. Is it 31st? 31st January 2019. To this day. It is called what? <laughs> Jehovah Jireh. To this day. In the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. No. In the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. No. In the mountain of the Lord it shall be provided. No. It shall be seen. What is the difference? When you say it shall be provided, he says, when you get there, God will bring it. No. It is when, before you get there, God has already brought it. So, it is not about provision. Because as far as provision is concerned, it is already provided. But the issue here is what? Seeing. So this is a mountain of sight. Oh, glory to God. It is a place of sight. I, I was sharing this, I think, on Tuesday. I said, the greatest thing God can ever do to you is to give you sight. I have walked around people who have sight. Well, you know, when you walk around someone who has sight, that's when you know you don't see. I'm telling you the truth. When you walk with someone with, with sight, you see a problem, you are frozen. They see a problem, they are motivated. Because they see potential, but you are not able to see. And then you look at this person and say, which world do you live in? Because you are seeing the same thing, but one of you spiritually, in, inwardly, you are blind. The other one, they have light, they see. Glory to God. I don't know if this is a true story, but I heard it from Miles Monroe. He said how, you, you know these plastic shoes, how they, uh, most of you know plastic shoes, you know? Uh, Sandaka, you know, nowadays I think they are called Crocs or something. You know, they have a good name nowadays, not Sandaks, <laughs> you know, but they are Sandaks. He said, two people from the U.S. went to India. And then uh, one of them, I think was a missionary, he looked at the Indians walking barefoot. He sympathized with them. He said, oh, Lord, these people, they are so poor. I mean, he began to sympathize with them. The other one was so excited. He says, oh my God, this is, <laughs> this is a market for shoes. <laughs> and he went back to his country and manufactured for the first time plastic shoes, which were so cheap, anybody could afford. So what happened? He saw. Now, that time, it was people walking barefoot. But now, there are still issues. There are problems. There are opportunities. But it is only God who can open your eyes to see. Who can open your eyes to see. So in the mountain of the Lord, it shall be what? It shall be seen. 
In the next five minutes, I want to show you another scripture still related to Abraham on this matter of sight. And I think this one will even be more clear. In Genesis chapter 21, now it is giving us the story of um, Hagar. You remember Hagar also had a child with Abraham. And God appears to Abraham and says, chase this woman and her child away because they are not going to inherit with Isaac. And so he wakes up early in the morning, prepares the mother and the child, and then he sends them away. Let's begin the story in verse 14 of chapter 21. And uh, if you can, do the New King James Version. I want us to read together on the screen. So what does it say? In the morning, I took bread and a skin of water, and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it and the boy to hug her and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. May you not be a wanderer in this year. May you not be a wanderer. Amen. Chasing after urgent things and never fulfilling important things. That's a wanderer for you. Then it continues and says, And the water in the skin was used up. And she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot. For she said to herself, Let me not see the death of the boy. So she sat opposite him and lifted her voice and wept. Her voice and wept. Then verse 17. And God heard the voice of the lad. One day I was reading that scripture and said, wait a minute, what, what is this? You see, verse 16, who cried? Verse 17, who did God hear? <laughs> it's a power of covenant. So God did not hear the cry. God listened to covenant. Because Hagar had no covenant. So her crying was invalid. But, but Ishmael was a son of Abraham. So he had a covenant seed. So God hears the cry of covenant. Glory to God. So he heard the, the voice of the Lord. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said to her, what ails you? You know, when God asks you a question, he already knows the answer. But he wants to know, do you know? He says, what's the problem? Hagar, fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Verse 18. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make him a great nation. I want to declare at this onset before I come to the end that none of us will die in the wilderness. None of us will die in the wilderness. You will get to your destiny because this boy had a destiny to become a great nation. And God said, this young man cannot die in the wilderness. So what is the miracle that God did? It says in verse 19, then God opened her eyes. Oh Lord, open my eyes. God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water and she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So that cry was answered by God by opening the eyes of the mother. Glory to God. It means that even before Hagar existed, God created the well. Had already created a spring. It was there. So, when Hagar was a child in Egypt, <laughs> the well was there in the wilderness. 
Before Ishmael was born, the well was already there. And God had ordained that this well is Hagar's well. It is Ishmael's well. One day they will come here and they will drink from this well. They will need it. Can I tell you something? God knew that you will come to 2019. God knew that you will be in Kenya cinema at this time. God knew that you will be in Nairobi at this time. And he had already prepared a well for you. God had already prepared your miracle, your breakthrough, your gate. It was already there. But now you have come to this wilderness and you have a need but you cannot see the solution. So Hagar takes the boy throws him away. She falls somewhere alone and begins to cry knowing my life is over. Not knowing she is sleeping next to the water. Just next. Just next. But when she prayed, the Bible says God opened her eyes. And she saw, oh my. Again, do you know something? Okay, now I'm finishing, the, the final finishing. God did not create that well at that time. She found herself at the well. So all her crying, you know, I can imagine Hagar was praying, oh God, bring water. Send water, oh God. Send water, oh God, or we die. You know, it is now or never. But God is saying, I, I, I think that's why he asked her, what is, what's your problem? <laughs> can imagine some of you in Akesha. You know, you're praying for that husband. I tell you, or that wife, or whatever the issue is, you are really praying. And God is looking at you and saying, what's your problem? Because your problem is not what you think is. Your problem is your sight. Can we agree that we are going to pray and ask the Lord to give us sight? Yes. Let's ask God to give us spiritual sight. I think tomorrow what I'm going to do is I will take some time to show you how you can, you can have that, that sight. How can you develop that spiritual sight? But I pray that God will open our eyes. Buenas for sana. And not just opening our eyes, but bringing us to a place of clarity. Amen. I want you to ask you just to make a short prayer, just one minute before we finish. Just uh, close your book, close your Bible. I want you to pray and say, Lord, give me my sight. Give me my sight. Give me my sight. Give me my sight. In the name of Jesus. Can you pray that prayer? Just ask the Lord right now by faith and say, Lord, I want to have spiritual sight to be able to see that this shall be the mountain of the Lord where it is seen. Where it is seen where it is seen where it is seen somebody pray that prayer just pray that prayer this shall be the mountain of the Lord where it shall be seen but Timaeus cried out even when people tried to stop him he couldn't be silenced and when he came to Jesus Jesus asked him what do you want he said I want my own sight I want my own sight in other words I've been seeing through the eyes of other people this time, I want my own sight in Jesus' name.
in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, this afternoon, the end of this month of January, we are praying. We are praying. Indeed, Lord, we have been praying this whole one hour. Even the word we have heard is a prayer. And Lord, we pray. It shall not be the same. So many of us, we have spent a lot of time in prayer. Seeking God for things, contending and all that. But we know now, Lord, that it is beyond praying. It is knowing what we truly need. And what we need is sight. And therefore, Lord, I pray for my brothers and my sisters that a miracle is going to take place. Even this very minute. Open our eyes to see the water Open our eyes to see the ram. Open our eyes to see the open door. Open our eyes to see you. Open our eyes to see the solution. And we receive it now by faith. In Jesus' name. Let the church say amen.